Well, believe it or not, when General Motors owned the division called Delco Electronics, Delco Electronics made parts for other companies outside of General Motors and still does today under the guise of Delphi, and that's the immobilizers for Hondas. So this, like all the other, like the uh, Passkey 3 immobilizer for General Motors, the Chryslers that we've talked about in this program, and the Fords we've talked about, the PAT systems we talked about, much the same thing. We have an exciter reader in this portion right here where the lock cylinder goes in, and then the module is going to communicate with the body control and also through the, uh, the CAN bus. All kinds of modules are going to talk together, like the PCM for the password for starting or no starting, and the cluster to control the immobilizer uh, theft light. So let's talk a little bit more about how Hondas work, starting with a tech tip on what happens when you turn the key. Now, when you have that lock cylinder in this little immobilizer exciter reader coil, and you stick the key in and you go to twist the key, when that ignition comes on, obviously like the other systems, it's going to excite the little transponder in the Honda key, the little pellet with the radio transmitter. It's going to then read that radio signal and send that up the line to the body control module or whatever module is handling uh, the operation of the anti-theft system. Now the tech tip here is knowing what's going on with the speed at which you're turning to crank the engine tells you a little bit about what's going on. Is it a theft deterrent issue or is it possibly maybe just a no start? I've just got a bad fuel pump, ignition module, whatever. So here's what you do. If the ignition is turned to the on position from lock to start quickly, the engine will start but only run for about a second or so, then it'll shut down. Much like some of the GM systems years ago with the pass lock systems. So very, very similar, stick it in, turn it quick, don't delay, turn it quick to start, it starts and it stalls, that's the sign of an immobilizer problem. However, you'll get a different symptom if you go to crank it differently. In the second little bullet you see there, if the ignition switch is turned to the on, and then you pause. So I get my key out of my pocket, I stick it in, I turn it on, bing, 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 the idiot lights and so forth, and I wait for a second or two, and then go to crank. The starter will crank the engine, but won't even try to come to life. So you have two different no start system problems, two symptoms for the same issue, an immobilizer issue. This could be bad, wiring between it and the other modules in the vehicle could be bad, key pellet, I guess, could have went bad. It's not very often it happens, but it can, or it could be the wrong key in a program, a key that's not been programmed and so forth. Now, speaking of program keys, the vehicle originally comes with three programmed ignition keys, but the immobilizer itself can accept up to six different codes. So you could add three more keys and you would uh, have a lot of keys for that Honda. Now let's talk about normal operation and then troubleshooting further. Now let's talk about the little light that's in the cluster that tells you for what's going on with security status. Normally what happens, you turn the key on, it's in run or whatever, you have the key uh, in the ignition on position, you'll have the light blink, the security light blink for a couple of seconds and it goes out. You turn the key off, if everything's working properly, the, the little uh, telltale on the cluster for security is off. It doesn't continually blink. To, to do any kind of a theft to turn or whatever. It's just off. Now, if the immobilizer key is not recognized, so, you know, I've got this key, maybe a locksmith or maybe Walmart or somebody like that, cut the key for the customer, but they never programmed the little uh, transponder or didn't come with a transponder, what's gonna happen is the light is going to come on and it will just keep blinking. And then you turn the key off, it'll blink 10 times and shut off. That's a sign you've got a programmer uh, an unprogrammed key or maybe a prob pr problem with the immobilizer. Now, if the immobilizer indicator on the dash does not come on at all, you need to look at that F CAN. That's Honda's uh, low, low speed CAN bus between the PCM and the cluster. So make sure that the cluster is coming to life and so forth with a CAN bus message. Could that, could, that could also lead to not only the check engine light not working, but also the immobilizer light not working. And finally, if the immobilizer light stays on hard all the time in the cluster, you need to be looking at a cluster issue, something is shorting out that little telltale lamp in the cluster, keeping it on all the time. Few last items on Honda immobilizer troubleshooting. Always check 
the battery stay to charge. These things are not going to work properly like a lot of electronics unless you have a good fully charged battery. Look for non-factory keys. Also, look for anything on the key ring, like I mentioned with the other makes and models, that could cause interference with the RF transmission of information, both from here to excite this, and from this to then report back once it comes to life and starts transmitting the radio signal back to the RF receiver, the transceiver in the immobilizer. So anything on that key ring, if it's in a little case, make sure you remove it from the case and so forth and then try it with just a plain old key, no ring, no accessories, no gadgets, no little tennis shoe, plastic mop, whatever. Take all that stuff off there and see what happens. Check the ECM first for trouble codes and then check the BCM. And also, check the immobilizer status PID with the scan tool. Now, will your scan tool be able to access Honda's immobilizer system? That's the $64,000 question that nobody ever knows, even sometimes the person that sold you the scan tool, because maybe it pulls those PIDs and does codes and communicates with that module on some Hondas, but it doesn't on others, and you grab the factory Honda tool and it'll do them all. So buyer beware with any OE level aftermarket scan tool, it's gonna be hit miss occasionally with the holes that they don't get filled in. Remove the fuse and also the battery or the battery cable to clear the log status after you've done repairs on the immobilizer program keys or whatever so that the module basically starts at square one. That's Honda, not that hard, typical for Honda, simplicity.